and welcome to another edition of Audio Vviews. Video views, reviews and interviews on all things related to audio and music. Today I'm going to talk about the Audio-Technica 440 MLA cartridge, the little cartridge that could, as I like to call it. As I will explain, this cartridge has provided me more hours on, of vinyl enjoyment than anything else out there, and you'll see why. Now let's start with the basics. First of all, this cartridge lists for anywhere between $229 and $299. There doesn't seem to be much agreement on what the list price is. But until very recently, you were able to get one for well under $100. In fact, I bought a couple for, I believe, $80 on Amazon.com. However, in the last few months, there's been so much hype about this cartridge that now the prices have shot up. Even then, if you're a careful shopper, you can find it for under $100. Today I went on the web, I, find, I found this cartridge for $99 in one place, $115 in another place, and $199 in another place. So shop carefully and you will find it still at a good price. Now some of the uh, basic technical uh, uh, specifications. Now I recommend you just go to the website and look on the web for, for all of the details about channel separations etc etc. What is important to us that is it's a 4 millivolt output cartridge which means you can use it with most uh, moving magnets, uh, phono stages, in fact I would say probably with, uh, with all of them. Uh, for vertical tracking force they recommend anywhere between 1 and 1.8 I like to set it at the upper end. Uh, in fact, mine is set, I believe, at 1.75 uh, grams of vertical tracking uh, force. Always better to err on the side of a bit too much tracking force. Uh, in terms of sound, I believe it's very detailed for what it is, especially when you compare it with other budget cartridges such as the Shure M97XE, which I always also like, but it's much smoother and softer around the edges, so it's very uh, detailed. But that doesn't mean that it's bright. Some people said that the predecessor, the AT, uh, AT440ML, uh, was bright. The MLA definitely is not an overly bright cartridge, at least not in any of the systems and turntables where I've tried it. Um, in the mids are sweet. Again, not as sweet as the Shure M97 XE because the mids are the strength of that particular cartridge, but they're very nice. The bass is excellent, it's nice, Taut, not uh, not boomy, very well controlled. Keep, all of these comments, remember, is about a cartridge that you can still get for under $100. It doesn't compare to my $1,000 Clear Audio Maestro, but it uh, comes pretty close. I would say easily 80% uh, of, of the way there. Now, the key thing about it is that this cartridge tracks like a champ, especially in inner group distortion. Now, what is inner group distortion? Let me show you with NLP. As a stylus move from the outer grooves to the inner grooves, the information is uh, much more compacted. Uh, you can imagine you have to have, uh, represent the same frequency, the same amount of information in much smaller space because the, the turntable keeps rotating at 33 and a third. So uh, in a much smaller circle, you have to have the same amount of information. Now, what happens is that with many cartridges, when it gets to that particular point, the, uh, the information becomes too much and the cartridges start to distort. Uh, it's called inner group distortion or IGD. It's one of the things that used to drive me crazy and one of the drawbacks uh, of vinyl. Now, because of the way that the stylus is cut, it's called a microline stylus. In fact, that's what the ML in the MLA designation stands for, micro line. The AT440 tracks the inner grooves like a champ. And I was immediately sold on this cartridge if only because of that. Now, another advantage of this stylus design is that it seems to reduce surface noise dramatically. Another uh, very big added bonus. So, in terms of sound, I think it's fantastic for rock. Here's Dark Straight, something that always sounds, uh, sounds good. I also like it a lot for classical music. It has enough separation and detail, so if you have some big symphonic music you can uh, hear it with enough detailed separation. The sound stage is also pretty nice. Uh, I must say, it would not be the cartridge I would pick for jazz, uh, necessarily. It's not that it's bad with it, but somehow when it comes to jazz, I like a warmer cartridge. To me, jazz has to find sound warm and smoky. So if you have the luxury of having multiple decks, multiple system, and multiple cartridges, 
uh, I would probably recommend something a little warmer. Uh, I don't know why, but I like to listen to jazz on my Shure cartridge, on a vintage deck and on old tube equipment. Again, this doesn't mean that it doesn't work well with jazz, it's just, just that the, the fast, detailed uh, personality of this cartridge works, in my opinion, better with rock and classic. I like things a little bit softened, uh, softened with jazz. Uh, now, having said that, it is a relatively forgiving cartridge. As I said, it is not bright, as some people have said, maybe the predecessor was. Uh, this version definitely is not. I hate brightness. There's no way on earth that I would recommend this cartridge if it was uh, bright. Now, if you have a fancy system, maybe you don't want to put a $100 cartridge on it, but even those of us with fancy system may have some records that they've had for 20 years ago, some scratches, they may not be the cleanest of records. It's always good to have an extra cartridge to play those. I definitely do that. I don't put a little bit worn out records on my $1,000 uh, cartridge. It's also good as a spare. It's good to do bad experiments. Overall, look, for $100, whether in, as an introduction to vinyl or as a spare cartridge or a cartridge that you can use in a, on less than perfect record, it's hard to go wrong. It seems to work very well with most stone arms. I tried it on an Empire 698. I have it on my Thorens with an SME tone arm. I tried it on modern unipivot tone arms, uh, such as the one on the, uh, the VPI turntables. And it seems to work well in most cases. Very forgiving, uh, very compliant with most turntables, just the right sound and a champ at tracking. So I don't think you can go wrong. If you have $100 and you can buy one cartridge, or even if you have $150, you can buy one cartridge. I give the Audio-Technica AT440 MLA my unqualified recommendation. And even if you have to push to 150, 160, it's a cartridge that I would still consider uh, very strongly. When you get into the 250, 300, we may have other options for you, uh, but that's for another video. This is Alberto. I hope you enjoyed this audio video of the Audio-Technica. And if you try, feel free to drop me and drop me an email and or a message on the forum and uh, let me know if you like it as well. Thank you.